Hello and welcome to the meeting of the Rotary E-Club of District 7710 for Tuesday, April 24th, 2018. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I just want to give you a few quick reminders about the ways you can connect with our club. Uh, our website is Lead With Us, that's L-E-A-D-W-I-T-H dot U-S. And if you visit the page, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about the club and also contact us by email. We're also on Facebook. If you search Rotary E-Club of District 7710, you'll find us pretty easily. And we're also on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is Lead With Us at Lead With Rotary and Instagram, we're Lead With Rotary. So please just take a few minutes to friend or follow us. Um, and now I'd like to ask MG to kindly introduce this evening's wonderful guest speaker. MG. Hi, good evening everybody. This is MG because speaking to you from India. Uh, Mandeet and I go a long way back. Uh, I first met her about uh, 20 years back uh, when I was in charge of the Rotary Exchange and we had about six girls from Colombia come to Hyderabad and uh, I had uh, taken them to see the simulator of Airbus A320 in Hyderabad and uh, so we were waiting for the person training inside the simulator to come out so that we could go and see, have a, de de a demonstration of the simulator. So, and guess who comes out? Manjit. And she <laughs> looks at all these girls and says, who are they? And then I explain to her, we have a thing called Rotary and uh, uh, they have come under an exchange program from Colombia. And then she says, I, even I want to go. I said, okay, come in the <laughs> evening and fill up the application. So that's how we met uh, uh, accidentally at the simulator. And since then, we have been very, very good friends. So uh, she and her husband, Raju Hirani, who is into making movies, we, uh, we are all very, very close family friends now. And uh, uh, Manjit originally was an air hostess uh, with uh, uh, Indian Airlines then. Now it's now called Air India. And then she got fascinated by flying and then she wanted to be a pilot. So she came to America and learned flying and um, finally got back to India and became a pilot. And now she's a senior commander and she trains commanders. So uh, she, she, she has come a long way in flying. Uh, she, she's totally into fitness. She's very, very fond of fitness. <laughs> and uh, everything she eats uh, is calorie before she eats or, or whether their friends eat. So we have to be very careful to be around. And uh, <laughs> she's a philosopher, as you can see from the book. I'm, I'm sure you know that video. And uh, the uh, book has, uh, was launched in, La, in London, in uh, the House of Lords in London, and has been listed as the most memorial book of 2018. And uh, with this short introduction, I give you Manjit. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Should I start? Yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Amji. Sorry, I had a bit of delay there. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you, MG, as you're called here. I know him as uh, Gotham. <laughs> so, uh, hi, everybody. And uh, as Gotham has already introduced me. So let me start with the Rotary Connection first. That was uh, because of Gotham, as he's, I met him in 1997. Uh, that was the exact year. And I'm always have been a very curious person. If I see someone doing something, I have to do it. Gotham comes with these Colombians over there and they say, oh, the, the Rotary Exchange Program. I said, oh, even I have to go. And in the evening, I go to Gotham's house to fill up an application. And I still remember when I was writing that application, filling up my name and uh, details, there was a column that I had to write an essay. And believe me, that was in 1997. It's almost more than 20 years. I couldn't write that essay. I had a friend of mine with me and I said, why don't you help me to write this essay? Now, why does Rotary want me to write an essay? Anyways, I wrote that essay and we had a selection process and I went to Colombia, South America. 
and it was the most 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 beautiful experience because you usually go for holidays okay you go to any place and you see things i would say at a very outer level but this was something like you have stayed with the rotarians and uh, with five different families in five different cities going and attending the meetings and understanding the culture really really very well so it was a beautiful beautiful platform very enriching and uh, i always though i'm not a rotarian but i always said that you know i want to do something uh, for rotary club and i keep trying it in my area but somehow it never works out and again i'm back to rotary today so rotary has given me a lot so thank you very much so now um i will be talking about my book i'm sure uh, everybody's uh, got a copy of the book and uh, let me start with the journey of my life first um i started as an air hostess as you mentioned that was in 1986 i flew for 2 years and after 6 months i got bored of my job and i said i need to move on i um, i need to move, do something more challenging so in india those days you know we used to have a television serials why i'm pointing out these things is sometimes these things whether it's a movie or a book or a television good serial can how things can inspire you so there was a serial called udan udan means about flying it was about a lady ips officer uh, the she was the only lady among so many men and the struggle uh, that she's going through uh to become an ips officer ips officer means a police officer so i was so fascinated by that that i said oh i have to do some something like that something very challenging and in those days in india we were very very few lady pilots not even heard of so i had this i got this idea watching that episode and i did my homework and um, i found out that america is the best place for flying and in america dallas fort worth is i was told is the best base of flying the texas because of fuel and the weather and things like that so i made my arrangements got my funds and did all the uh, requisite exams and things like that and i came to usa in 1989 january the 26th and it did my flying i really loved flying in usa because uh, it was first of all very practical in india first you have to do a lot of theory work a lot of uh, uh, exams and you have to be in the classrooms and then you get to fly in america when i came here first thing first day i sat in the aircraft and they said okay take off like it was so amazing you know and along with that you had to study and you're doing your exams and theory part so i found america very practical you know like there was no waste of time and i did my flying in four and a half months so i came back to india in 1989 and i got a job immediately within 2 months i was back to that time it was indian airlines the domestic sector so my i'm associated with indian airlines now it's become air india so that's the journey and then uh in 93 i was a full fledged pilot and in 1994 i got married to my husband uh, who was just an editor at that time like uh, in the films the the one who edited the films he was just an editor and after two years he mentioned you know his dream is to make films but i be honest i never knew you know like about film making and i said okay wow that i thought was more uh, interesting to hear but then he made his first film it was in uh, 2001 it was called munna bhai mbbs it's about a uh, goon who wants to become a doctor it became very famous it became a very popular film then he made a film called uh, i couldn't find actually the dvd of uh, munna bhai mbbs then he made the second film can you see this uh, dvd it's called uh, lage ra munna bhai it's about uh, mahatma gandhi he made, and even this became very popular and it was uh, we had come to united nations to uh, show uh, present the film then he made a film called uh, three idiots which became a real cult film it's about education system and it became very popular in india after that he made a film called uh, pk that was the last film so 
Um, this film is very important, at least for my book, because in this film there was a dog, which uh, was a cocker spaniel, a puppy, six weeks old, and it was showed in the film. And the, the background is I was very, very, very scared of dogs since my childhood. And my son, uh, who was born uh, in 1998 and was 14 years old that time, he always, always wanted a dog. But because I was so scared of dogs, he was not a dog was not allowed in the house. So when my husband he made the film PK, the little puppy was six weeks old, and after the shoot, he was supposed to go back to the breeder. And uh, uh, something, I think he had a change of heart. My husband he said, no, no, let's not give it back to the breeder. And he put it in a basket and he decorated the basket and he sent it home. So it was like a surprise gift for both of us, for mother and son. So my son was euphoric that day, you know, he was so excited. And uh, this is how the dog Buddy came to our house. So when he came to my house, he was only six weeks old. I won't say I was scared because he was such a puppy. And... Uh, Though my son, he promised he'll do everything he, all the time. Every time he used to tell me, you bring a dog and I will do everything. But it never happened. Someone had to take the charge because with dog, there are so many responsibilities. And uh, because he would go to school and then his exams and board exams. And so I had to take the responsibility. And slowly, slowly, then I started uh, taking him out for a walk. And those days I had started writing my blogs. That was in 2015. And uh, I love philosophy actually. And I think it's by nature. You might eat a food for me. That food, when I eat, I see my proteins, I carbs, I see the minerals, vitamins. I philosophize that also. If I see a dog, I start philosophizing with him, okay, with his life. If I see my flying I philosophize that also. For me, everything, I see only philosophy through everything. So when I took my dog for the first time for a walk, uh, because I was not experienced, it was my first time. And in India, we have a lot of stray dogs. I don't know about America, uh, though I've not, not, never seen any stray dogs on the streets. So when I took him out for a walk and near my house, and I see a bunch of dogs, they are, they're chasing us and barking at us. That really scared me. I was in tears, actually. So there were some passerbys. I told them, please help me out and drop me home. So I came home. And uh, in the evening, I discussed with my friend. And I said, oh, my God, today I had a terrible experience. So I said, oh, don't do one thing. Don't go this side. Go on the other side. There are no dogs. There's a school near my house. So I went the next day to the school side. And uh, as I crossed the road, again, I see a lot of dogs chasing us. Again, I got very scared and crossed the road and came home. So that I came home and I just thought, I said, you know, these dogs are very territorial. Uh, because the first day I had this experience and second day I went till a point I didn't have a problem. When I crossed the road, a dog came chasing me. But when I came on the other side of the road, the dogs didn't come. So that means they have their own fixed territories and uh, you can't enter the territories. They bark at you and they scare you. So I said, you know, why only dogs are territorial? If you go to any jungle, any forest, I mean, uh, you see there, there'll be chimps or tigers. Even they are so territorial. Why animals? Then I thought, I said, even the human beings are very territorial. Our whole fights, which we are having, all over the world, the wars are because of the territories or because of the caste or because of the religion or because of various reasons. We are territorial in the house also with, especially there's a big, this thing about laptop in my house. You know, my husband doesn't allow me to touch his laptop or anything on the dining table. It's my chair, this chair in the kitchen. So that was the first blog I wrote in the book. And that is my first chapter. Anyways, then came so forth my Whatever observations I made of his growing years of my dog, next stage, I saw puberty because he was growing. And then my son was also 14 years old. I saw both of them growing at the same age, like both of them, like teenagers. As if with animals, it's so natural, the puberty, and we laugh about it and we accept it. But with humans, we don't do it. At least in India, we have ages, you know, okay, at 18, you can get married if you're a girl. At 21, uh, you get married if you're a boy. 
and there are so many restrictions. So I've drawn those comparisons then about parenting and so forth. So the thing is that I wrote three blog, uh, posts and I put it on my blog. And that is still on my website. If you see my website, manjithirani.com, you'll see three of them. Then I wrote 10 for my convenience on my iPad, which I'm using right now. This is like everything for me, my iPad. So when I'm on my flight or on my layovers, whenever I get a chance, I keep writing my notes on it. So I had written 10 of them and I was at Delhi airport, which is the capital of India also. And I went to a bookshop and I met a salesman and I tell him, you know, I have written a book. So he's was very sweet to me and very kind to me. And he said, Oh, congratulations. I said, you know, do you know any publisher? Because I need to publish my book. And believe me, I had nothing. I just had those 10 chapters with me. That's it. And I, what a book was cooking into my head. So he gave me a few publishers names. And uh, one of them was Penguin, which is the biggest publisher in, in India and UK. So I mentioned uh, and um, I called them up and I said, you know, I have a book on my dog. So first they told me, okay, we need 50,000 words. I said, see, I don't understand words. I, all I know is I've got 10 chapters of it and I can send you a link of my blog, which I did. And uh, next day I get a call from them that we saw your link. We read the posts. We really like it. So they said, can you give us 20 chapters? I said, yes, sure. So I had to write another 10. Which, as I said, I get a lot of time on my layovers. I remember I was at Delhi layover and finished a lot of writing over there. Then I went to, for a holiday, uh, to again to Austria, again my favorite place. And I finished my writing work there. So I submitted and it took me around one year after that with the contract and editing and all to come out with the book. And here is the book. This is the book. It's called How to Be Human. Life Lessons from Buddy Hirani. So Buddy is my dog. And uh, if you read the synopsis, which it says that uh, the dog has come from PK film. So that's the background of the book. And uh, so now, again, as I said, I didn't expect much for me. It was like a dream, you know, like I've just written few, uh, I've written my blogs and I approach a biggest publisher. They publish my book and the book is out. But the book has got also very, very, very beautiful illustrations. Every chapter has got an illustration. I'm sure you'll have read the book. And uh, I met this illustrator. Her name is Missy. Like every chapter, like this is a chapter on territorial or you see any chapter which I have has got uh, illustrations. This illustrator is uh, Missy. She's from uh, USA. I just met her recently uh, at uh, London Book Fair. Our book was invited to London Book Fair and uh, to shake, showcase the book. So that was a big, big uh, surprise for both of us actually. They made a box, uh, the London Book Fair people with illustrations on all four sides and about the book and they introduced the author, they introduced the illustrator. So the book has reached London. Then we launched the book at uh, House of Lords, that is the parliament in the UK. And in Amazon, if you go through, through the link on Amazon, if you buy the book, you can see here, it has become, I don't know if you can see, it's become the part of books of, memorable books of 2018. So this is a pick from Amazon's uh, editor's choice. And uh, so, and the book is doing extremely well, be it on Amazon, be it on uh, bookstores in India, because so far it's in the domestic market. Though I went to London Book Fair, if any international people like the book, if they take the rights, then slowly, slowly, it'll go in the international markets. And uh, this is, so far has been my experience with the book and my, uh, journey. If you all have any questions, I can yeah. talk more. Yeah, if... I'm logging on. No. Does anyone have any questions? Or you'll have to unmute yeah. yourself if you're if you're uh, muted, unmuted. So 
talking. I'm just. I'm not used to talking so much, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Hi, you. Manji. <laughs> there was a, a very popular series yeah. in the United States called What I Learned in Kindergarten. And it, it, it reminds me of your approach that if you stop and think about it, you can learn a lot of very important lessons from your kindergarten teacher at age five or from your dog as the dog is growing along. Have you ever heard read that book or heard anything about that? Did it play into your understanding? No, but I will do it. I love, uh, I'll do it. Surely. <laughs> there's a book on it or uh, there's a television serial? No, it's a book. It's, it's everything I needed to know I learned in kindergarten. And, uh, but it's, it's a life I'm lesson kind of thing book. like you're talking about. What you, what you really can learn if you stop, if you don't think you have to learn it from a mentor, but you can learn it from your dog or your child. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's true. So I, have, I learned I have, a lot from my dog. Okay, let me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have sure. a question. Are you still flying? Yes, very much. Oh. I have a flight today. Uh, it's morning time, yeah. Uh, it's uh, six in, uh, in the morning. I have a flight at one thirty in the afternoon to Goa. You must have heard of Goa, the beautiful uh, oh, on place the, uh, of beaches. East, west coast. It's in the west coast. It's in the west of yeah. From Bombay, it's only one hour flight. I'm going there. Well, I can't wait to start reading. Um, my wife took a, a, a brief read through and she liked it. So uh, I can't wait for a break so that I can uh, pick it up myself. <laughs> I have it here. <laughs> yes, Hi, thank you. I wish I could sign it for you. <laughs> this is Rhonda and I enjoyed your book so much. I actually thought of people who are lovers of dogs as well and how they um as you say philosophy the dog experience relationship with humans i i saw um actually i need to get more of your books <laughs> it, it, it was actually really <laughs> um it was helpful to me to understand them because i am not i never grew up with animals um, you know, I like to look at them, but, you know, I, I never desired to have one. And um, I, I couldn't really relate to those that thought, you know, their dog was human-like or what have you. So your book helped me understand their frame of mind and their, what they're actually trying to express. So I thought that was really beautiful. But the art, I mean, I really fell in love with the art. It's like their paintings. I was really um, yes. impressed. That's right. He's an artist. I, I'm assuming not just an illustrator. Yes, absolutely. You see her on, um, she's on Instagram, uh, Missy Dunaway. And I met her in uh, London this time. And a uh, very young girl. She's from, in fact, she's from USA. I'm going to meet her soon in New York. But she's done amazing artwork because she keeps putting her art on uh, Instagram. So you you must catch on her. Missy Dunaway. Thank you. Dunaway. I agree. The, the story, I loved your story, Manjeet. It was so interesting because um, I know you were really conquering fear too, right? At the same time, you were really working through that process. <laughs> and also, I guess your um, curious spirit shone through and you were intrigued by Buddy. I, Buddy's still sleeping, everyone, so we don't get, <laughs> we don't get to see Buddy right now because he's in, in bed with a very hyper kid. If he comes also, he'll be jumping all over. <laughs> But I, I loved how you tied everything to actual like events and the way we behave as humans and um, your philosophy, kind of your ph philosophical journey with Buddy. And I particularly loved the chapter about um, uh, myth, Mythy, myth, your housekeeper, was it, sorry, I just, your housekeeper who didn't Me like too. the dog either. <laughs> Me too, yes. Right. Yeah, I have to tell the story. Uh, I have a cook in the house who was so much overweight and uh, when buddy came to the house first thing she said i don't want this dog to be around me mm -hmm. and uh, she kitchen is her domain and she said you know this dog will not come in the kitchen i said okay fine because i need her as a cook because i keep flying so i need her very badly you know i said don't worry buddy will not come around you <laughs> and uh, we do have a caretaker see in india we have a lot of people working for us and uh, it's a common thing in India. So I have mm -hmm. a caretaker, especially for Buddy. 
and once he was going uh, on leave and i was so worried because you know if i have a regular job i can do things but mine is a very irregular job with the timings and so i told uh, mithu that please do me a favor all i need from you is just feed him on time that's it because that worries me a lot and uh, for some reason she agreed and uh, when she agreed after few days i saw buddy in the kitchen hovering around and mithu was fine with it i said how this change happened you know and uh, after few days i go on a flight early morning and i see mithu with buddy on the leash and she had a stick she was smarter than me i think she realized the, about the stray dogs <laughs> and i asked her what are you doing <laughs> so she said i'm taking him for a walk because you only told me no that you should walk to lose weight and then how they bonded so well so i thought he was a companion to her because all these years she didn't want to step out for a walk because she didn't have a companion mm-hmm. so i took and then of course i've seen lot of my colleagues i like i have a colleague of mine who's not married so we always tease her you know why don't you get married she said i don't need a husband i have a dog in my house you know he does is better than <laughs> so what i mean to say is it's not that it's a thing. it's a dog can fill a vacuum in your life you know i feel he's like as i said the companion the member in your house whom you can talk and emote to Does anyone anyone else have any questions? I'm sure there are others here. Who... It's funny now. Uh, what's the relationship now with your 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 son and the dog? You know, uh, I've written this, mentioned this in the book that my dog loves my husband and my son the most <laughs> because uh, I because he loves my son the most because he sleeps with him right now. Both of them are sleeping, and he my son allows him to lick. which i never did till date and uh, my husband uh, right now he's making another film and he has his editing room in the house so buddy spends a lot of time with my husband and my husband will sit and massage him all the times so they connect very well so with animals it's not that they love everyone they only love people who also love them back but during the book though i mentioned this very clearly in the book that buddy doesn't love me he loves my husband and my <laughs> son the most but the equation has changed when um, i finished writing the book so penguin people asked me to get some pictures of the dog and me and uh, i had to get some pictures and whenever i click a picture i stand like a statue and i thought that's how i have to get the picture but my husband being a director he said no you have to cuddle the dog and show that how much both of you are in love with each other because it's going to be a picture on your i have this picture on the back two of us uh-huh. you see this so because of the promotion we had to i had to cuddle him that day a lot and buddy was that time licking me a lot and which i was if you see the rushes also no 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 don't lick me you know i don't like it <laughs> anyways so <laughs> but you know the equation has changed after that because it's the touch therapy which works you know with human beings i've realized it works with animals also when you cuddle them and uh, get close to them it's a bond you know it's a different kind of physical bond so now buddy hovers around me he has started acknowledging me in fact post dinner walks he takes with me only he'll come whenever i'm around he'll be at the door that take me out for dinner or uh, take me out for a walk so now i would say buddy is in love with me it <laughs> took him four and a half years to fall in love because of the photo shoot things changed <laughs> i can relate to that story because i think i there are four of us in my family and i was fourth in line for our dog's affection affections <laughs> it's nice to kind of rise to the top every once in a while so yeah <laughs> Manji, I wanted to ask you about your donating the profits to Wildlife and uh, Wildlife Trust of India. So how did you? I mean, I know that you talk a lot about an, animals in this book, but did, do you have special ties? I, I guess. Do you want to talk a little bit about the donation, how that works? Or? Yes. Um. Because uh, when I was writing this book, I said, you know, I'm professionally doing very well myself. I'm a pilot, and my husband is a filmmaker. So I didn't write this book to earn any money from it. You know. and uh, through writing the book i realized 
I need to contribute something to the society. As I said, when I went through Rotary Club and last time I saw you guys talking about uh, the water project and there's so many things you want to do. We, I do things in my own way, like helping somebody who's got cancer recently or education or this and that. I keep doing, but I wanted to do something at a large scale. And uh, in India, especially the place I live, Bombay, Mumbai, it's called now. Uh, you know, they're cutting a lot of trees because it's a very metro city and they're chopping off the trees and we are protesting against that. And I see a lot of... Uh, Mm, I thought, which way can I help human beings is the best way. If we keep the environment clean, if we keep the environment good, I think uh, it'll keep us not only healthy, happy, it's good and for the generations to come. So I have a friend of mine, uh, Dia Mirza, who's the <coughs> brand ambassador of, uh, she's written the foreword in the book. She's an actress in India and she's the brand amb ambassador of United Nations for wildlife for the environment. Mm -hmm. And I thought best is to donate money there because I know it will be in good hands and, and it will be a good cause. Mm -hmm. So whatever money I'm going to get from my book, it goes to her. Goes to that, not to her, to environment, wildlife. That's such a great cause. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that story. Do others have questions? I did, I did want to say that um, Manjeet was incredibly generous um, and sent all of our eClub members copies of the book, plus some. So if you <laughs> want to reserve a copy, <laughs> let me know. Um, Manjeet, we, um, you know, we're in Rotary. We don't do anything without giving back to a cause. So in your honor and in your name, we have been, um, I, we talked about having each of our eClub Rotarians uh, donate to the Polio Plus campaign which is our signature disease eradication program. So um, we, we can't thank you enough for the actual books, but we, we hope that by donating a little bit of money um, to Polio Plus, that that will um, be equal to, you know, everything that you've done for us as a group. So we really appreciate your thank you. contribution. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm taking a bunch of books to our district conference this coming weekend. So I will keep spreading, <laughs> spreading the, the buddy, the buddy word. So, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. It's, it's so good to have My you. Pleasure. Um, I don't want to, we still have a bit more time if anyone has any questions. Um, we're here for the next little while. So um, I think I kept writing down more questions. So <laughs> I'm kind of, I don't want to monopolize the time, but I did want to let that, I didn't want to let it go without letting everybody know who's on the call. If you didn't receive your book, please let me know. And then if you're a guest mm -hmm. tonight, um, I'm happy to get a copy to you as well. So thank you. Bring me one at, at all conferences, if you don't mind. I okay. enjoy that. Definitely. So Manjeet, are you thinking about your next book? <laughs> yes. Yes. I've already, in fact, written my next book. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that book I've written is, uh, I have titled it, I Made Friends with Venus. Venus is a star. Uh, that book I've written on my flight journey, because I've been flying since 24 years. And even as I say, said, I see philosophy in everything. So I said, our life journey is from birth to death. That's our awareness, you know. We don't know about pre-birth and post-birth. Nobody's aware of it. What we see is birth is from birth to death. That's the journey of life. And for me, when I go on my flight, you know, I leave the house and I go to briefing room first and we do our medicals and then I go to the aircraft and uh, we do the taxiing, then take off, then climb and descend and landing. So I've compared the two lives. And, uh, and I've done my flying from America. So I have those experiences and like those things when an Indian will read will not understand, but people like one of the chapters I've written is uncontrolled aerodrome. When we were flying in Texas, you know, you'll see always there's an ATC uh, who monitors are flying and decides, you know, okay, you take off or whatever. But there are small fields in uh, when we used to fly there, they had no ATC. You were totally on your own. So it's your decision and your responsibility. So that chapter I've related to the youth because my son is 19 years old now. 
and they don't like parents telling them things, you know, because they'll say, oh, we know it all, you know, <laughs> they want to go to the club late night and you worry because, you know, uh, late night and whatever. So that related to the youth that, okay, fine. It's when you're in an uncontrolled zone, it becomes totally your responsibility. And you, because when I was in uh, Texas in 1989, there was a crash over there of a small plane because two got bumped into each other because of, there's no 80 seats, totally your responsibility. So that's a book and I have titled the book called, uh, I made friends with Venus because there's one chapter on it. Uh, you know, I have an, sometimes an early morning flight, say at 5 a.m., for which I have to get up at 3 a.m. or have a flight late in the night. You know, we have a flight to neighboring countries, so Dubai. So the flight will be at 8 in the night and I'll be landing at 6 a.m. in the morning. So you're flying the whole night. Uh, it does, it's not so easy because it, you know, to be awake the whole night, it takes a toll on you also. So what I do is when I go for a 5 a.m. flight, I tell myself, oh, wow, today I'm going to see the sunrise. Because if you go in the night, you see the horizon colors changing, you know, from dark, pitch dark to orange to yellow. Or when I go in the night flight, then I said, okay, and now it's thanks to the apps on the mobile. So I look at the stars and recognize the stars. So I said, I made friends with Venus. Because when I go in the night, it's a night star, evening star. And when I come back from my flight, that same star becomes a morning star. And that star is there during the daytime also. So I have now started taking interest in the galaxy. So I said, when you're doing a work, I mean, whether half the times we don't like our work, we have to find something. You know. So this is how that second book is going to be. And I've already submitted to Penguin. <laughs> That's so cool. That sounds like a wonderful book. So actually, it just it made me made me wonder what's your next big adventure? <laughs> you're, flying, you're writing books. <laughs> you have a big adventure lined up, but another one or you never know. I'm coming to USA <laughs> to the book fair, so <laughs> let's see what you. I think doors open. Like I went to UK, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they they invited me to USA now. And uh, I, I don't know how you got, got uh, connected to me because I think through MG, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. He had come for my book launch. Mm -hmm. And I think you saw him with the book and you connected. Mm -hmm. So I feel doors open, you know, many doors open with one thing. So now there's a new world for me of writing books. And it's, I'm really enjoying this phase because I'm, every week I'm talking somewhere, mm -hmm. doing something already written my second book. I'm getting the idea of my third book. So it's very interesting, you know. <laughs> We've watched the sun, I think, come up behind you. So, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully nobody else makes you, you speak to them at five. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> thank you so much for being here uh, again. And uh, we, yeah, we just, we're so honored that you could be with us today. No, and it was totally my pleasure. And I'm so love to be with the Rotarians. Truly. I'm going to um, I'm going to make an attempt to share my screen. It's being a little finicky right now, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. But we do have. Huh. If you'll read the book and you'll enjoy the book, I can send you this DVD later. The background, oh. the PK. That. I've been curious about the movie actually, so that's uh, that's kind of fun. I'll be coming to USA. I can get some copies and I can post you guys from there. That's, if you're yeah. interested, you know. I'm definitely interested. Well, this is our uh, virtual uh, <laughs> certificate of thanks. Oh, thank so, you. so it's sweet. An honor awesome. Visit. Thank you so much. And uh, for thank you so much for it. Um, and I hope we get to meet you in person sometime soon. Yes. And, um, yes. Maybe with your sure travels, maybe. and hopefully they'll will be an opportunity for us to meet. Sure. Um, we're kind of our traveling group, so you just never know. So we need to stay in touch. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> so that's very sweet for the certificate. Thank you very much. So, and as always, we end with the four-way test. Um, Rhonda, would you like to lead us oh, in the four-way test? Sure. Thank you. Thanks Thank you so. again, Manjeet. Very inspirational. The four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. 
Thank Thanks you so everyone. much. I'll stay online for a few more minutes if anyone wants to chat and um, the, the meeting is officially over. So thank you, Manjeet, again. Thank you, MJ. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night for introducing everybody. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and uh, safe flying. We'll, we'll thank be in touch again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye to all of you. Bye.